Ancient pig ruins, everyone. Essentially both the caves and the ruins of Don't Starve Hamlet here. These temples of doom are filled to the brim with dangerous mobs, annoying traps, but best of all, a whole lot of treasure at the end of the day. Plus, many of these special ruins will lead us to new islands where nothing else can. So make no mistake, if you want to progress in this game, you will need to endure some ruinous pain. Folks, prepare for a long-winded information dump. But don't worry, we're going to be starting with the important bits. Like where ancient pig ruins can even be found, of course. And surprisingly, the majority will be located on the initial spawning island, as it is here where at least three common ruins will be found in the wild plains or rainforest biomes, alongside two special ruins being found somewhere in the deep rainforests, perhaps even in the same one at times, mind you. The Palace Island, aka Island Number 2 in Hamlet, typically generates with one common entrance, and its one special entrance is actually just an exit for an entrance found on the first island, so don't really get confused there if you can. The Puck List, or rather Fountain of Youth Island, will spawn with no common ruins, and it too has a special one that's merely an exit to a ruins on the spawn island. But lastly, the Herald Island, as I call it, is Hamlet's fifth. And contrary to the two before it, it will have a new special ruins entrance on top of its own exit from another special ruins entrance on island number one. Now don't worry if I've already lost you in all that, as I'm about to make it more clear here. One of these special entrances on the spawn island will have a mage-like pig atop of it, and it will be found in one of your deep rainforests. Now this particular ruins leads to the Palace Hamlet Island and is also home to a very special lost relic in the Jewel Truffle here. Somewhere in this ruin will be a room with spinning dart traps, pressure plates, and the jewel itself, and you will want to try to take said jewel with you, as when given to Queen Malfalfa in the palace itself, you receive a royal gallery key, which in turn can unlock one of the three very important items within the royal gallery, so make notes. But next comes another special entrance found in a deep rainforest on the spawn island, and it has got an egg or artichoke looking thing atop of it this time. Now this here leads to the Pucklist, or better yet, Fountain of Youth Island, and it too offers us a chance at obtaining yet another special relic in the blue sow here. And just like the jewel that came before it, the sow will be trapped and in a room of its own that may have some hostile mobs in it too on occasion, so be careful, but also be sure to turn it in for another key when you get the chance. Good luck. But now things get a bit more involved as these next two ruins will be both somewhere in our gas rainforests. Therefore, a gas mask will be needed eventually. This first one here has a matte crown in it and will offer us a chance at something called the Pharaoh Stone. Somewhere in these ruins, the stone will just sit in waiting and said room will not always be what you see before you mind. However, this Pharaoh Stone itself will always allow for us to translate the Mant language. And trust me, that is more important than how it may sound. So learn up on it elsewhere if needed. But our final special ruins of the day is easily one of the most important. So listen up. Also found in the gas rainforest on island number one, this ruins entrance with the ancient herald atop of it doesn't actually contain anything special by its lonesome and instead leads us to the fifth island in which a second ancient herald ruin can be found. Now, this second entrance will be surrounded by snap tooths guaranteed, so deal with them as you please. And once inside, we actually have two things to find that are both vitally important to our survival. The first being the Nightmare Fuel slash Purple Jam Powerhouse that is the ends well here, with the second being none other than the Apocalypse Calendar itself. Now the former will be in its own room by its lonesome, while the latter can only be found behind a suspicious crack, so be sure to stick around to hear just how suspicious cracks actually work. Now. 
While we will briefly touch on some of the basic encounters found in these ruins and their many rooms, I would like to just first point out just how many rooms there actually are between a common and special ruins. Most common ruins don't even near 10 rooms in total, and can sometimes be less than 6 for Pete's sake, which makes them absolutely great to navigate for any quote-unquote safe treasure gathering you want to do. Because most special ruins, on the other hand, far exceed 10 rooms, and occasionally get even bigger than what you see here. That said, depending on world generations, a lot of the same runes can actually exist in both or either. So when it comes to early game splunking, splunk wisely if you know what I mean. But to help you do that, you'll be needing some tools of the trade, yes, yes. So as for things you'll need no matter the circumstances, you will be wanting a light source of some kind, be it bought or crafted, and you'll have to choose between a machete or a pair of shears. But as for things you'll potentially need to do some real treasure hunting in these ruins, you will have to pay mind to a ball peen hammer, a regular hammer, and even a pickaxe potentially. And finally, to help keep you safe from the many traps you'll be facing, a couple disarming tools could really go a long way. And you'll find out why in a minute here. Cause for now, let's talk machete versus shears versus creeping vines everyone. Without question, you will need one or the other, as every single special entrance in the game will be blocked by vines that respawn daily, mind you. And with 12 uses of machete, we can actually unblock said entrances, of course. But shears, on the other hand, may have way less uses, however they will cut through these vines in but three goes. So, uh, there you go. But creeping vines do more than block a ruin's entrance, mind you. Many doors within ruins will also be blocked, and here a machete will get the job done in four swings versus a pair of shears doing the same job in butt two. Now which you use is entirely up to you. However, machetes just last longer in the end, so remember that. But now it's the time to talk ruins diving and what we can expect, folks. The act of navigating any ruins is the bloody same, really, so we'll just start there. Cause as we should know by now, ruins are just compiled of multiple randomly generated connected rooms, and it'll be up to us to navigate from room to room, facing whatever dangers there happens to be in search of treasures or an exit. It's simple enough. Until we start to factor in what said rooms can actually throw at us, that is. For you see, many rooms will have pressure plates dotted on the floor, and they can activate dark traps and or close doors on us if we aren't careful. Now, if there are a lot of pressure plates around and things called striking carvings on the walls, then know that the plates are going to activate dark traps. But if there are five plates spread across evenly in the room, or you just see a line of plates like this, know that they will activate and block all doors in the room to prevent progression. Now, there are ways to beat both, with the latter rooms being the easiest to do, as all we need to do is weigh a plate down with something to reopen the doors. But as for dart rooms, it is not that simple, as our choices are avoiding the plates as best as possible, although be warned, mobs can activate pressure plates themselves at the end of the day, disarming pressure plates as it is indeed a thing you can do as you can see, or lastly, disarming the striking carvings themselves, which may be the best option in my opinion, as not only do you never have to worry about stepping on a plate again, you can also get a quote unquote free blow dart in return. Good stuff. Oh. But before we quickly mention some of the other room types, know that one can actually disarm those spinning dart traps too, so make notes, and oh times two. Some rooms may offer eroding totem statues that can be chiseled by us, but when we do so, dart traps activate. So either disarm them, or use the totem statues themselves to block a dart's path. Just check where the striking carvings are before you do this, of course. But yes, what else can we expect in Ruins Rooms Beard? 
Well, you will likely find a single eroding totem that won't trigger traps, so that's nice. Many crumbling visages reside in all types of ruins, so if you want some easy gold with the use of a ball-peen hammer, then keep an eye out for them. Some ruinous rooms will offer nothing but basic grass and twigs with some light peering in, although mobs can spawn in these rooms, so don't be too gun-ho per se. You may encounter entire rooms full of things called smashing pots that can be hammered open for a chance at some pretty sweet loot, actually. Although they are non-renewable, so make note there. Many wishing wells can be found in both common and special ruins, and as we should know by now, wishing wells can be hugely important in our survival down here in these rooms, if we got the proper tribute, that is. And lastly, many rooms will see battalisks, vipers, and scorpions ready to fight you or each other, depending on the room itself, of course. And while I can't help you fight them per se, I can still relay that a torch against them will help panic them to free you up a bit in these tight rooms, if you know what I mean. Good luck. And while there is no way I can show and tell every single iteration of every room, I will end our room hopping here with nasty spear traps regardless. They are the third type of trap to be found down in these places, and they can fill entire rooms, be activated through proximity, or even be fully automated. We can hit them, shear them, machete them, but best yet, burn them to the flippin' ground. So do that. Burn them all down. Note that spear traps are dodgeable though, if fast enough, and that a giveaway to them is a light in the middle of a group of spears themselves as you can see in this room. So make notes. That said, on occasion, nothing will set off spear traps at all. And I don't know why, because they'll usually just activate if you leave and return to the same room again. So be mindful there, I suppose. Nasty spear traps are nasty, but they're not that nasty, especially when we can control when they activate in certain cases. But in the cases where we can't, and there are entire rooms filled with them, they suck. They suck bad. If you do get a room like this, just be sure to pick a path and burn through it. Don't even bother with the whole room. Good luck. Ah, but now begins our last talk with suspicious cracks, everyone. Randomly located in all types of ruins. Yes, even common ones, mind you. Suspicious cracks lead to secret rooms, but there is a catch. Not all cracks are actually doors. Now, we can determine which are and are not via magnifying glasses here. Although Wagstaff players will have a huge advantage with their spectacles at the end of the day. But with a magnifying glass in hand, we can investigate suspicious cracks and our characters will tell us if it is a real secret room or not. So pay attention. If it is, we have two options to open the crack. Mine a pillar in the same room if there happens to be one present, and or blowing the crack up. Be it gunpowder, slurdle slime, a coconade, or even use of a weather pane, we can explode our way into a secret room that may actually offer some really good loot as you can see. Careful now though, taking said loot may spawn an ancient pig spirit, so be mindful there. Plus, there's usually mobs in the secret room too. In fact, just expect mobs in the majority of the flipping rooms down here, but thankfully, once you clear a room, they'll never return. So that's nice. And what is also nice is the fact that no one will experience any sanity loss went down in ancient pig ruins. So take advantage of that. One could also take advantage of one of the many wall braziers found around these joints for some additional sustained light if needed. Although these are just more aesthetic flair, if you ask me. But lastly, two last notes before we go. Be mindful of rushing through rooms with mobs without clearing them, as mobs do remember where you enter and exit a room itself, and that could end poorly for you. And finally, come in Apocalypse, every single room in every single Ancient Pig Ruins will have Ancient Pig spirits there to bother you senseless. So end the end of the world as soon as possible. But there you have it everyone. 
Finally, a guide on ancient pig ruins within Don't Starve Hamlets, where they lead, what they offer, and how to safely navigate them and their many challenges. Again, I'm sorry for not helping you clear every single dang room there is, but we've already been here long enough. And you've got the basics now. Now it's up to you to become the best treasure hunter the world has ever known. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Splunk away. And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.